Thanks, that was awesome. Good morning. Uh, Jim's going to come up in a second. Jonathan gave away my surprise, so I won't build to it as much anymore. Um, it's really awesome to be back in Portland. Uh, for those of you who have been with this project since the beginning, you know this is the city that we started in. Uh, it's actually the building that we started in. We had a little smaller scale. We certainly didn't have all the IT operations that are going on behind the scenes now, but it's really fun to be back here. So I look really smart for titling my uh, title of the year of the user. Um, I actually didn't coordinate with this. I didn't know we were going to have users talking today. Um, but I did this because um, I actually think it's important that we start talking about the user. And in fact, I'm going to do something a little different with my keynote. I actually want to hand my keynote over to HubSpot, who's a real company using OpenStack to solve real business problems. So let's just keep going with this theme. Before I do that, I want to give you kind of a quick update on what's been going on with us in the community uh, and talk a little bit about how we actually got to this point. So in 2010, we had a very basic but important task to do. That was we needed to actually build OpenStack. I don't think it's a secret at this point, three years on, that there wasn't a whole lot to begin with. We had a promise. We had to do a lot of work building this. So we took some smart developers out of Rackspace, NASA, and some other enlightened organizations that believed in this cause and said, let's get together and work designing and building what, is what we know as OpenStack today. 2011, 2012, a funny thing started happening. Users started showing up to this development conference. People who were much more interested in running or operating OpenStack than actually building it. And so users and developers had to learn how to start working together to build this project. And that is one of the major defining characteristics and unique aspects of OpenStack, I think, in the community today. I think this is the year that the user really does take over. So we have almost 3,000 people here this week. We just saw that there's, there are 500 developers that contributed to this release. I think it's safe to say, looking at those numbers, most of you didn't contribute code. Most of you are here because you're either running OpenStack today, you're helping someone else run OpenStack, or you're here to learn about it. So I think this is the year in which we really start to see the users define where OpenStack is going and what its future is. So that means we're at a real tipping point. The people who are running OpenStack today, they're not zealots about OpenStack for its, for its own sake. They really want to use it to do something. They want to put it to work on applications or any sort of business problems that they may have. If you were with us in San Diego, we had Troy Toman, our head of engineering, give an update, update on how we're actually using up, uh, OpenStack and the performance characteristics we saw in our public cloud. So I want to give you an update on those stats today, but highlight what they really mean. OpenStack is being used, and it works. So let's, let's look at some of those stats. We launched uh, Nova OpenStack Compute in our public cloud in August. Since then, we've had over 549 million API requests. It's pretty good usage, right? It's had 99.94% .94 availability during that time. Pretty reliable. And as we've been working with you and the community to build Grizzly, we've been deploying it near real time as well. We wouldn't do this in an OpenStack-based cloud that's running real customer workloads unless it actually worked. So in short, I think what you guys are doing is working well, and we're very proud to be a part of that community effort. So some thoughts on how many people are using this. We released version three of our private cloud software about six weeks ago. It's free and open source, and we've had almost 8,500 downloads of that in that period of time from every customer segment and region you can imagine. And a lot of folks who are deploying this on hundreds of nodes. That's proof that the world wants OpenStack and is ready for it today. If you saw uh, yesterday, we made an announcement uh, about the Rackspace Global Cloud Network. We're really happy about this. Uh, our intention is to help service providers who not only want to deploy OpenStack-based public clouds to be able to do so, but also to help operate them, which is a key component of getting clouds up and running. We also want to make sure that those clouds are federated together so that users on those clouds can be assured of a consistent and integrated experience around the world. And so we'll be doing a lot of work on that this year. People usually don't like to show slides that go down and to the right. In this case, I'm really proud of this. So Rackspace's relative code contributions to OpenStack have decreased. It's a great thing. The reason? As the community has stood up, our relative contributions have gone down. You guys are simply developing code too fast, and we can't keep up. Doesn't mean we're not developing a lot. It doesn't mean our, our overall level isn't increasing. It actually is. We're adding developers to the project every day, but you guys are simply growing too fast. The fact is there are over 45 companies that contributed to Grizzly, 
which means that no one company, no one organization, no one person actually owns the direction of the project. We all do. It's a true community effort. And so one of the things I want us all to keep in mind this week is we're all talking about the different great things we're doing as vendors and users in the community, is to remember that this really is not about any one company or organization winning in OpenStack. This week is all about making sure that we're all doing the right things to ensure that OpenStack actually wins and is successful for users in the cloud market. So we have almost 200 rackers that are here this week. Um, they are crossing every span you can imagine. We have obviously developers. We have people who are involved in our QA and testing. We have lots of our operators. We have marketing people. We have community people. If we can be of help to you and engage with you, please let us know. We're here to help build something great with you this week. So with that, my surprise is gone. I uh, want to introduce HubSpot. So if you're not familiar with HubSpot, they build marketing software that enables their customers to convert leads uh, into customers for themselves. Um, they serve over 8,000 customers worldwide. Um, I want to do a video before I have Jim come out to do a quick introduction to what they do and how they're working with OpenStack today. So here we go. Uh, HubSpot, we like to think, is the only marketing software that you'll ever need. We have over 8,500 customers. Uh, we focus from SMB through the enterprise, and we do everything from content generation, capture, social media, lead nurturing, email marketing, all the way to marketing analytics. We think we make marketing that people love. So we've been a Rackspace customer since 2007. Early on, we decided we did not want to be in the colo business or the racking hardware business. So we didn't have the proverbial server under a desk. We had a server in Texas. Our mantra is we ship to production about 75 times a day, about 2,000 times a week for QA. We not only deal with uh, continuous build and continuous deploy, we deal with continuous provision. That gets extremely demanding on a team like ours where we have to make sure that infrastructure is ready and able to take those updates. At any point in time, our cloud needs to support all those types of products. That can range from Hadoop uh, all the way to MySQL, to a Django stack, uh, you name it. For us, a product idea might be a PM who has some coding capabilities who wants to put out a prototype and actually get internal feedback or get a select customer group of feedback. And the last thing we ever want to do is tell them they have to wait for IT or they have to wait for us to get a server. So from idea to production could be 30 minutes. So we've also grown up in large public cloud spaces. So as we apply that to Rackspace and to the future of our OpenStack implementation there, uh, we expect that same provisioning capability. So we will not wait for 30 days, we will wait for 30 minutes, and uh, that's the way we roll. So we're big believers in open source at large. Uh, we contribute, we consume. 95% um, of our product has been built on open uh, source, but it's always been at the application and library layer up. This was the first opportunity that we believed could handle our volume really in our future growth and scale, that we could actually have an open source VM hypervisor slash operating system, which would give us all the benefits of what the large public cloud providers have, as well as control and QoS and scale that we would like to see in more of a private uh, managed environment at Rackspace. So the, the kind of combination of that burstability plus the control visibility and QoS that we can get is really why we chose to go with OpenStack. OpenStack allows us to build things that we may not otherwise be able to build in a public cloud. We have full control over things that we might find and be able to change things with the stack itself and push those changes back up to the community. We believe that OpenStack with the community that's being built around it will be over time the fastest way to those paths where it's an API driven open standard infrastructure versus a hardware closed based infrastructure. That's one of our pure tenets about why OpenStack is the choice. Rackspace's role has been great. Uh, it's great to see uh, that they embrace open source so much. The fact that Rackspace Cloud is running on uh, OpenStack is fantastic. And the fact that we can build hybrid clouds that are based upon a single model is even better for all of us. Okay, and with that, I would like to ask Jim O'Neill, the uh, CEO of HubSpot, to come up and tell us more. Thanks, thank Jim. you, thank you. All right. So how are we doing? We all doing well? Levels are coming up. You guys are recovering from the long trips and the plane rides and all that kind of fun stuff? Okay. So let's get our little PowerPoint up here. Um, so today, I'm super excited and if you listen to what Jim just talked about and Jonathan before him, it's amazing to see 
how far OpenStack has come in a few short years. And with that, I'm actually going to tell you our history about OpenStack, which is actually more than just a casual relationship. It's actually a bit of a love story. And with any good love story, it actually began with a meeting of chance. And so in 2006, two gentlemen, Brian Halligan and Dharmesh Shah, co-founders, were both serial entrepreneurs, and they were at MIT, and they were studying their MBAs. And they were realizing the way that we all learn, shop, and buy online was fundamentally changing. These changes in consumer habits were driving us from cold calling, email, direct mail, and interruption-based to what I think we all use and love today, which is social media, blogging, and search engines. So let me ask all you, are consumers in control? I think consumers are now in control. How many of you guys wake up every morning <laughs> excited, excited to check your inbox? I know I'm not. So then why do marketers spend all their time trying to shove your inbox full of email that you don't care about? And the reality, and this is what Brian and Darmesh realized, was the marketing playbook was just broken. So let's look at some stats, OK? 86% of us skip TV ads. And I honestly think if it wasn't for the Super Bowl, those numbers would be way higher. We all have DVRs. 91%, 91% of us unsubscribe from emails that we didn't ask to receive. And worse, most of us probably mark those as spam. 44% of all lonely direct mail gets put into the recycling bin. And then the last stat is over 200 million people 200 million people are on the do not call list. And the last I checked, there was only about 300 million of us Americans. So how's that for an unsuccessful marketing program? So Brian and Dermesh, back in 2006, realized the marketing playbook was broken. And they not only set out to fix it, but they actually set out to make marketing something that people could love. And so we did that. And we started off HubSpot. And we've been very fortunate. But it wasn't long after that, and we had that love, we realized that we needed to also make a product that people loved. To just create marketing that people loved wasn't enough. And we were actually having a great, great time. And with that, it allowed us to create some great growth. So if you look at these, our real numbers, we're a very transparent company. That's our revenue growth. We're enjoying this, but there was something still wrong. When we started the company, and you guys probably saw in the video a minute ago, we did start off in a managed facility, and it was a great managed facility. I'm a big fan of Rackspace. But our growth was so fast that it couldn't keep up with us racking proverbial servers via our partner or without us front-loading a whole bunch of costs and able to do that. And I'm talking dozens and dozens of servers every few weeks. And we were looking at this rocket ship, and we realized that something was wrong. Along came the public cloud. OK, you all know which one I'm talking about. You all do. She was fast. She was beautiful. She was unbridled. And this let us do things we could never do. We had fast, we had flexibility, and we had scale. That scale is what we need. And with that, we could actually create something that we could love. And this was great. But with any good love story, there's always a little catch. Zombie servers. For those that don't know what a zombie server is, they're servers that lose their mind, they lose their storage, they lose their network, they become lifeless. But they actually consume resources. Those resources can be dollars, those resources can be your time. And sure, here and there, one or two, it's not a big deal. But we know, at scale, zombies multiply. And one or two can become a few. And at HubSpot scale, we're running thousands of servers. A few can become an army. Now, that's disruptive, and it's really hard. So with that, we had to figure out operational costs. And in our world, we had about a 2% monthly instance failure rate, zombie servers. Okay? You can kind of deal with that, but at scale, again, at thousands of servers, that's get pretty difficult. 
At the same time, we have a 20% quarter over quarter instance turnover rate. And what does that mean? Well, we're growing so fast and we're having to spin up so much capacity that we may need to scale up or we may need to scale out our infrastructure. And in the public cloud, that's hard because you don't necessarily have all those options to do that. So what we really have to do then is to take all of that and do it ourselves. At the same time, that tugs exactly against our reliability. So this is our target uptime, four nines. And I hear at telecom, the guys that went before, it's amazing when people talk about five nines, we'll be very happy when we get to four nines. But to get to four nines, you really need to have a lot of control. And it's hard, 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 hard to have control when you have this kind of chaos. So we look to the legends, the Googles, the Netflixes, the Facebook, the Etsys of the world, and they all told us you have to automate all the things. Can you guys say automate all the things? You guys are in the cloud? Come on, automate all the things. Okay, thank you. Automate all the things. And when I really say automate all the things, I mean all the things. We had to automate everything. Now, there's awesome companies out there. I bet your right scales in the crowd. We're huge fans. There's Heroku, who's in the public cloud. But when you guys saw that video, you heard us say that we ship to production 75 times a day. We've been doing that for over three years. We've never changed the cadence on that. That's a stat that I'm super proud of. It's actually kind of crazy. A lot of people tell me we're crazy. But the automation of all the things made that possible. And that was great. So with that, we could love a little bit more. We could love our cloud a little bit more. But seeing how we have this story of zombies, and zombies can be very pesky, especially, especially in mass. And every once in a while, those zombies would get really, really upset. And what would they do? They would actually create an apocalypse. Now, we've all lived through apocalypses. We shouldn't, but we do. And they're painful, and they're disruptive. And many times when we look at how do we survive these apocalypses, the answers are move to another place in the country that's safe from zombies. Well, that's really time consuming and expensive, especially for a startup, even at scale. And what we really figured out was that we needed that more control that we talked about. And in these cases, we often have to wait for kind of central command to come in and restore civil order. And that was hard. So we would look around and we would say, what can we do? but we really felt like our hands were tied. They were tied to this cloud model that we couldn't control. And that got very frustrating. So then along came OpenStack. And a little history of OpenStack with HubSpot is every year since we started the company, and I've been there since we started it, we went out to market and we would look at the public cloud providers, the private cloud providers, the colos, and all those kind of folks in between. And in 2011, I got very lucky, very lucky, I'll say that. One of our earliest IT guys came to me and said, you should go to the Diablo Design Summit. It's down the street in Boston. I'm from Boston. And thankfully, I did. I went to that summit, and it was awesome. I met people who were like-minded to us and who shared the exact same beliefs of open source that we did. When you guys saw in that video, when I say 95% of our application stack is open source, I want the whole stack. I don't want just the app stack. I want our infrastructure stack as well. And so we came out of that conference extremely excited. So excited that we decided we were going to place a bet. So within one month of coming back from that Diablo Design Summit, again, we're a late stage startup, we put down a whopping nine servers, nine nodes. Now that's not huge in scale, but it had the promise. We saw computing capacity. We saw that we could take workloads that we run in our public cloud, and we could apply that there. So nine months later, we decide we're going to double down. We go with a whopping nine nodes with Essex. And it's starting to get a little, a little interesting, because we're beyond just compute. We're now into storage. And that was a huge need for us. Just as a, a quick sound bite, we run about a petabyte of storage. It's, it's not the big, big data, but it's getting there. So now fast forward a little bit later, six months after Essex, with the launch of Folsom, we place all cards on the table, 166 nodes. And that may not sound like a tremendous amount. If you look at the number of cores and the amount of RAM, it's 2,000 cores, it's about 20 Ts of RAM, it's two and a half petabytes of storage. That's actually larger than our entire implementation 
of our public cloud. So that's pretty big. What's even more exciting is it actually doesn't stop there with Folsom. With Grizzly, which is honestly just two weeks old, and we've all just heard about Grizzly, we're taking that one step further, and this is all live. We talked about the public cloud, okay? We're going to add in our private cloud for hybrid, okay? We're now extending that with Grizzly to full bare metal. So when we think about it, we have the exact same image running in the cloud of our choice. That could even be a colo if we chose to. And really the beauty of that and what that gives us is image parity. So I just want people to pause and think about that. How many people have been able or been wanting to take that one single OS image and run it in any data center, including a public cloud? And the beauty of that is our application doesn't know where it runs anymore, and our application doesn't need to care where it runs anymore. And we find that really game-changing. <clears throat> so with that, we can have public, private, and bare metal all in one. That gives us efficiency. So I hadn't talked yet about the efficiency word. So we've taken this now single OpenStack image, and we've picked it up from the public cloud. We've moved it into our Rackspace-powered private cloud. And we're seeing the same exact workload. These are Hadoop, HBase, so even non-traditional from the VM standpoint. And we've seen a whopping four times increase in processing of that exact same workload. So we're really, really excited about that. We actually think this is just the beginning. We haven't yet had time to tune and move all the knobs and the levers, because folks that deal with Hadoop and HBase know there's some intricacies with that. How's that for control? People excited? I'm excited. Come on. Be excited. Be excited. OK? So with that story, <clears throat> we're actually going to take a pause. And Mark from Comcast kind of stole my thumb thunder because, you know, we are going to do a live demo. And the first rule of live demos, I'm going to walk over here, for anyone that's ever done a live demo, is you never do live demos. But I'm going to do a live demo. And so let me talk a little bit before I do it about the live demo challenge. So when the Rackspace gang came to me about a month ago, and they said, Jim, I'd like you to do the keynote. You're up to doing it. And I said, kind of like Jim Curry, I really, I'm not a big public speaker. I really don't want to do this, but I'll do it because I feel that strongly about OpenStack. But what I said to my gang who run our DevOps team is, can we not just do the standard keynote? Can we actually demo all of the love and magic that we've got in our public cloud and actually make that work in the private cloud, in this new OpenStack private cloud? And I threw the gauntlet down, and I said, I don't want a demo. I want the real deal. So here's the caveat. Only 10% of what I'm going to show you today was tweaked. And I'll be honest, I'll be fully transparent about what we tweaked for the demo today. Everything else is 100% live. So I'm going to ask for one big thing. If this demo works, and I have 100% confidence it's going to work. And this is in production, by the way, real production. You give our DevOps team, a couple in the room, Craig Tracy, you saw in the video, give them a little love when I'm all done with this. You've got to give them a little applause. OK, so with that, I'm going to take an application, just any app, our login app. So for HubSpot, we have tens of thousands of marketers creating love every day for their customers. And I'm actually going to take that app, and we're going to make a change and add more OpenStack capacity to that app today. That app also runs in the public cloud. So I'm crazy enough that I'm going to take that public cloud, and I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of private cloud powered by OpenStack. I'm going to do that in under five minutes. So we are going to go, and I'll do this, and you guys can all time me. We are going to go take a image from Glance on OpenStack, get it on an OpenStack Nova compute node. We are going to provision capacity. We are going to network. We are going to do all that fun stuff, and I'll go into the details in under that five minutes. Now, I don't know about for you, but for me, that would have historically taken days, weeks, hours, and maybe even longer in a traditional IT environment. So I think this is a big deal. So let me introduce you to Rainy. Rainy is a good friend of mine. She's the actual tool that I'm going to use today to show you this. Now, Rainy comes from the name of raining servers, because we were raining so many servers all the time, OK? That's actually a lie. 
it came from raining cash. We were spending so much money spinning up servers so fast. We've long since fixed it. We've learned the lesson. If you guys know the public cloud, you know to turn the lights off. That's a very common expression nowadays. We now turn the lights off. But I'm going to introduce you to Rainy. So what Rainy's going to do for us is she's going to provision hardware. She's going to install software. She's going to configure that software. We use Zookeeper and a bunch of configuration tools. And we're going to network that software. That is going to be live in our production environment within five minutes. Now, we couldn't do this. I'm giving two shout outs, and I normally don't do shout outs, but I'm going to give two to OpsCode and to Puppet, because anything that you guys see around these automation frameworks is not possible without those guys. So give those guys <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, that is not something HubSpot done. We just take those ingredients and put them together. All right, so let's do a real, real demo. So if we can switch over to this computer. We live? Good. You guys can see Chrome. OK. So we are going to go to Rainy. And let me shut down my instant messages so no one pops up. <laughs> now, <laughs> Rainy looks a little sad and lonely, but we're going to get into it. And a couple interesting things. We call it condensing. What condensing is, is squeezing the clouds. We're going to squeeze these clouds into actual computing power. And you can see I can do OpenStack, or I could choose a public cloud. And some quick things is you can see a host name. This is live. Don't kill me. Um, and don't get me into host names. We treat servers as dispensable, so we use mountain names. You guys may use something else. And this is a list of every single one of the HubSpot projects that's 100% automated. We have this massively fine-grained cloud infrastructure. So I'm going to do the demo. I'm crazy enough. We're going to do production. Hopefully, anyone that knows clouds knows that you tend to uh, choose an instance size. Now, the beauty with OpenStack, I'll choose a large, is if I chose a Hadoop or HBase type infrastructure node, well, that's going to go on bare metal. So from the end user, a developer, an operations engineer, again, they don't know and they don't care. For today's demo, I will do Tomcat. And I'm going to condense, AKA, squeeze the server. So now we're going to see what we call the pizza tracker. So we love pizza. Like, hopefully, you guys all know Domino's Pizza. It was like this genius thing where they made the pizza tracker, which tracks from the time I place the order for a pizza or a server all the way through to that yummy new server that pizza is ready. Now, as this goes through, Jordan, who is a real DevOps engineer at HubSpot, he's not really behind the scenes making a fresh pizza with ing organic ingredients for us. He's actually taking an image from Glance, getting that image onto an OpenStack compute node, and starting to provision that capacity. Right after that, Chow, who's another DevOps engineer, is taking the wisdom of the puppets, and he's getting all of the puppets going. So literally, in that 30 seconds, Glance, Nova Compute have worked, and we now have the start of a virtual server. Once that virtual server is there and it's on the network, that's when all of our lovely puppetization comes in. And while that goes, uh, Jim Curry had asked me a little bit to talk a little bit more in detail, because this does take about three and a half minutes, not too bad for a whole server on live in production, to talk a little bit more about our OpenStack implementation. So when I talk about those 166 nodes, um, we break that up between bare metal. We have about 100-ish nodes that are bare metal running Hadoop. So we think of data nodes, pure bare metal, image parity, OpenStack awesomeness. We take our counterparts in the Hadoop HBase world, name nodes, things that are more sensitive to failure, and we actually run that on OpenStack. So we have a hybrid, hybrid cloud if you actually think about that. Then we take our web and our application servers and our RESTful services and we run that on a pure OpenStack environment, say the rest of that 166 nodes. Um, we went all in. Uh, we talked about Glance a little bit in imaging. Um, we did 10 gig networks. Uh, we do not want, and especially if you guys hear us turning servers so fast, we don't want imaging taking us a long time. So that's why this is all possible. A um, couple other interesting things is when we talk about what we use with OpenStack, I mentioned Glance, I mentioned Nova Compute. We also are using block storage and normal storage, so Cinder. And we are an early customer using a NetApp device for massively sized block storage. So we've got multi-hundred T's sitting behind that Nova compute infrastructure. Um, also going on as this magically goes through this is we've got um, LDAP with Keystone, right? Because we have to authenticate all the nodes to get into this. We've got DNS going on. 
So there is a whole bunch of magic that's happening behind that. So Chow has taken some time on the uh, puppet wisdom going on, which is surprising. Usually we have a spe uh, special guest appearance by now, so we'll, we'll give it another minute. Um, some other things that I think is as important as we look at what we've done with OpenStack is the contributions around the ecosystem. So I think a lot of people look at OpenStack as just the computing power and the images themselves. I think this gets back to the whole room about how fast uh, the environment has actually moved. So let me just kind of be impatient and let me try to refresh our pizza tracker. And Craig, if you're in the audience, hopefully you're out there figuring out what's going on. Um, <laughs> so I don't have to sit up here and talk all the time. Um, and this should have been done by now because my, my, my timer is going. So where's Craig? What's going on? You're giving me the look. Everyone's here is hitting this page? Okay, is it just not refreshing? Okay, so let's talk about this page while Craig patiently waits right there. Um, we purposely changed the URL, so if you see openstackrainy.hubspot.com, that's purposely been changed to protect the innocent. We knew a lot of you folks in the audience would be hitting that URL. What's gonna be cool is once this finishes condensing, and did anyone else condense or was it just me condensing? <laughs> um, once we do finish condensing, we're actually gonna show you our login application and that login application, when you look at the actual destination, you will see that it's not in the public cloud, it's actually in the private cloud. Let's do a little refresh. You're gonna make me start dancing, aren't you? Boo, okay. So, we'll go through a couple more quick things. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to open up our login app, okay? So this is gonna be the app that that node gets popped into, and I guess because everyone's hitting it. I think we need more capacity. <laughs> um, totally embarrassing. See, that's why we're not supposed to do live demos. We've practiced this, we've practiced this like a million times. So uh, we'll see what's going on. Um, so anyway, what I was going to do, and then I'll, I'll get to the punchline in a minute. Uh, what I was going to do is go to our login application our real login application you'll see for HubSpot's point of view. Um, we celebrate customers, we celebrate people behind us. This would be what you normally would see. And I was gonna actually do something really cool and live from the OpenStack keynote uh, in the past couple of days. So we're gonna punt on the demo there, Craig? Punting on the demo? Ah, the rule of live demos. Okay, so with that production crew, if we can split back to the PowerPoint. So my whole punchline, was how was that for control? <laughs> and you guys are in control because you could have been able to do that. So I apologize, live demos everyone. Um, so with that, you should be able to love your clouds even more. Because remember, you've got public cloud, you've got private cloud, and you've got bare metal. That is a hybrid, hybrid cloud. So with that, we not only love our cloud, we love OpenStack, we're administering and demolishing our faith to the, today. And I wanted to say thank you. Check all this stuff out on dev.hubspot.com. We're gonna be blogging about it. We're gonna be open sourcing lots of the tools that we've added around this ecosystem. So feel free to check out dev.hubspot.com. Thank you.